Hey everybody, welcome back to the Metal Mill 52 workshop. Today is Sunday, Memorial Day weekend, 2001, for those of you who've been following along. I'm about to start on a very interesting part of the corn, which I don't think has been covered in any YouTube videos before. So this will probably take me this at least a few days, maybe the entire week, to get the product that I want. But I wanted to introduce this to you and I'll do this in several segments as I make each in individual part but here let's uh let's spend a minute and look at the different parts and what my plan of attack is so far okay here's the corn as it stands right now last night I finished and I did a little video of the end cap this is the spring cap and I figured out what I did wrong with the having to elongate these three holes. It, it's not going to be material, and I don't think I'm going to redo that just because I flubbed up something. But um, what I, I did, I do, did learn something. I think what I'm going to do when I make the micrometer part on the, the part that is very similar to this that bolts onto the other side, I think I'm going to use the same, the pitch circle diameter um, layout on the mill to drill the three holes, the three clearance holes for that, just so I don't go through that rigmarole again, as we say. So here it is. Real happy with with uh, what's been done so far. Very excited about the next steps, because here's the end cap thing, and here's what you're looking at here. These printed pages are actually uh, pages from the Duncan Metal Amps website. And like I said, that, that's one of the resources that I listed when I was talking about the project and what I did was print out his his website so you can see here this is the, the little cap on mine and I, I made the bronze bushing for in, of brass actually for inside there I do need to take that out and split it but I'm not going to worry about that right now I'm kind of on a roll with the micrometer head which is essentially this this assembly so there's three different parts that get in that, get made to make that up. And I have a, p a couple of pieces of inch and a half steel, which would be just right for that. So like I said, I think I'm gonna do this. I'll, I'll try to meld all these videos together in one and kind of cover the process there. So here is another page. One of the interesting parts, there is a, a thimble. It's a little tough to see in this picture from the internet, but. The middle part of that assembly is called a thimble, and it has 50 marks on it, which correspond to each one of them is a thousandth of an inch, because you use a, what I'll be using is a um, 7 16 inch 20 screw, so I can use a, a um, commonly available in the U.S. tap and die. I'll, I'll probably cut these threads on the lathe with, you know, using a, a, a single point lathe cutter. I'll probably use my diamond tool holder. I really like that for cutting lathe, um, or excuse me, cutting a thread on the lathe. But the nice thing is I can go ahead and I can run, if I want to clean it up, I could run a tap, or excuse me, a die over it. Um, so anyway, here's the cap part that I made last night. And the next thing I'm going to make is this, they, they call it the body which is essentially a one inch long by inch and a half piece of steel. Part of it's turned down to one inch and then the center is tapped. So that I'm gonna tap that 71620 as a one inch shoulder, a sixteenth of an inch that goes into the left side of the casting over here where these screws are. And I figure I can make that part first. I'm gonna to try to make that tonight and then during either tomorrow or the rest of the week, I'll make the thimble. The interesting part of that will be etching the 50 lines on it. So I've got a plan for that too. Stay tuned and I'll keep you posted about that. And then the last and would be a relatively easy part to make is a screw with a round handle on it, which, which is knurled. And the, the only interest, the, an, another dimension to it is it has this little shoulder here which is drilled through for some 3 16 inch balls and springs. So that's gonna be an interesting part of that project to make. So that, that keeps contact with, keeps the thimble kind of steady. And so you can rotate the thimble in relation to this line that gets engraved or scribed on the body. And then you twist, 
twist the handle and the, the thimble moves in relation to that and you can see how far that you know if you want to increase the depth of cut on the bottom of an end mill um, you can have control over how, how deep you're doing that and keep track of it so this is going to be a neat project I'm really excited about making this my plan is I'll do it'll be a lot of show and tell but a little bit by bit of the setups and some of the machining work but honestly there's a lot more talented uh, machinists out there fo folks who I mean people that are professional so if you want to see cutting facing turning you know look at a bomb or somebody like that me um, you know to me my what I can the value I can add is how did I approach the project how did I do the work holding what does that really look like how are those parts supposed to supposed to fit together is that too loose is that too tight um, those are the kind of things that my mentor Fred helped me with my live steam locomotive which is over there it's covered up right now just to keep dust off of it but um, that's the kind of value I'm hoping to bring here so thanks folks I'll bring you back for the next segment Hey guys, making progress on the body. I've taken the steel and turned it down to one inch, and this is an inch and a half, and um, got a nice finish on it. Let me, I'm about to drill, center drill, and tap it. You can see that line that goes around. I got a little aggressive, but I scribed the line. Let me bring that around for you, because I can hit that button all the time, and you won't see it, but... So I've got, um, again, I'm using 70 RPM for the drilling. Let's see if we can, where'd it go? <laughs> so you scribe the line. What I used, I mentioned my diamond tool holder in the last. There we go. I got a, a little aggressive with the scribe. I'll run a file over that when I get done. I probably... You know, made it fatter than it needed to be, but what I used was the diamond tool holder, and it gives a nice has that nice point that cuts a great scribe line. So you'll see that again in this series. But here we go with the drilling center drill. People said they like the live action. Believe me, I'm not going to go through here the whole sequence. But once again, I mean. Feeding it nice and easy. You see how nice that steel is. Like I said I don't really know if it's 12 off 14, but somebody gave it to me, probably Russ. He, my buddy Russ used to work at a machine shop. He got lots of drops. He had red paint on the end, but different paint codes mean different things to different people. So now that I've got the center drill, I'm going to go a little bit deeper here because 7 sixteenths is pretty good size. And we're going up to, um, we'll use a Q letter drill to do the drilling for the, the, the tap drill. So there we go. And I'll bring you back when it's tapped. Yeah. Hey folks, a little correction to what I had said a minute ago. Um, getting ready to drill and tap for the 7 16th inch 20 and I always check the tap to make sure I, I check my book and all that but um, I misread the line in my book and as a matter of fact the tap drill for the for the 7 16th inch 20 is the 2564 so that's what I'm getting ready to use so I want to make sure I corrected that mistake here's my setup I'm I've tr I drilled out the hole for the 7 16 inch 20 tap and I'm tapping it right now and with really large taps like this what I do is I'll, I'll put a vice grip on my uh, tailstock drill thing and uh, our tapping jig and I hold the hold the vice grips with my hand it's just easier ergonomically that way or you can actually set them up against and what I'm doing is with my left hand is pulling just like this using a chuck, uh, the, the chuck key without the crossbar in it. And I'll do that, it's usually what, what I've found, you can see I've got this about a quarter of the way in there. It's, I give it about two pulls and then I, you can feel the resistance. You, yeah, and then what I do is back it up and then to, to cut the chip. 
and um, the, you can actually feel it release basically when the chip is cut. So with these larger ones, this is how I do this. And I, I use the tap paste, I forgot to mention that. I, I definitely love this stuff. I'll put a, a coat of tap paste on the tap before I start it. So right now, I'm actually, I'm gonna stop videoing, but I'm, I'm gonna back this out and then clean the chips off of the tap and start over again. So it's a little bit of a laborious process, but I've never broken a tap this way. I always get good clean results and it, you know, it takes a little time, but, but I, I like to feel the metal being cut and so forth. So that's my little plan. Next step in the body for the micrometer, I'm just parting this off at a quarter inch thick. I thought about trying to get tricky and cut the shoulder, but I decided no, I'm going to go ahead and just part it off at a quarter inch and I can reverse it and face the end and cut the shoulder, turn the shoulder down to one inch. That, that way I can check it against the casting and everything. And as you can see here, I've swapped out the three jaw chuck. I set it down on the floor for the time being. I'll need it again in a minute, but there here is the part called the body. And it's now, I parted it off. Look how clean that parting, I did nothing. I haven't filed that, sandpapered it, anything. I mean, you can even still see the little curl of a chip from the threading operation. Um, anyway, so that's parted off at a quarter inch. And I need to make a, create a little shoulder, a sixteenth of an inch deep, and go into one inch. So I'll be doing that next. Um, here, just showing the tools and things. There's, I got the tap handy so I can run that through again. Also, I'm going to use that to locate um, the part. I should back up. The, um, the, the re another reason for putting it in the in the five C uh, collet chuck there is I plan to once I finish putting the shoulder on it, then I, all I need to do is drill the three holes, and this part is done, so I can get that done tonight. But what my plan is to put that in a block, uh, a 5C collet block, and then I can use the tap in the drill chuck in the mill to basically I can use this as a centering thing and um, to make sure I'm on center. And then I can set my zero zero marks for the pitch circle diameter thing and drill the clearance holes for the 632. So that's another reason for going over to the 5C. It's a little bit of a pain, you know, wrestling a, the, the three jaw chuck probably weighs 15 pounds or something. So not, not, not impossible by any stretch, obviously. And, you know, you can do it basically one handed, but I just love 5C chucks and I love the, the uh, concentricity you get from them and the, the beautiful results. Uh, while I'm showing tools, one other thing here is the, that's the cutoff tool I use. Nothing super fancy. Um, that's from my Grizzly set. And like I said, I need to order some new blades. But that's given some really, really good results. That's high speed steel cutoff tool. Okay, so here we're following up on drilling the holes for the the collar. The it's called a body. It goes into the left hand side is part of the micrometer. What I wanted to point out before I drill this, as you can see I've already drilled the other ones. I really like I'm using the, the DRO. I uh, really <laughs> like using that. Um, you know, the field expedient method I showed yesterday is okay, but anyway. I put, when I put the, um, the, the body into the 5C collet, and into the collet block, sorry, um, I made a mark here to indicate on the side of the collet block showing where the index mark was. And I want that to be at the top of the um, assembly when it's all done. And the way those holes are laid out, the two top holes are like this and the bottom one is in the center. So I, I made, the, that's what these marks are here with the Sharpie marker indicating where I wanted the holes to be in relation to the scribe line there. It's not rocket science, but I figured since I already put the scribe line on there, I wanted to account for where the hole was. So here we go, drilling speed again. I've already used the center drill and just 
very easy, gently. We're only going through three sixteenths of an inch of material. Even still, I take it easy. <laughs> Crows will probably laugh. There, this will finish up this part basically. There is one unexpected thing. I noticed when I tried to fit the shoulder into the one inch hole, it wouldn't fit at first. So I was thinking something's wrong, but actually the corn lettering, um, I guess it, it comes in right here, that interferes, like the N, interferes with this uh, uh, that part of the guide. So. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do to accommodate that, but uh, one thing I don't want to do is to like hack it away. I thought about milling it tonight. Uh, Carol's doing things one-handed here while I'm trying to film, but I thought about milling it away tonight, but I, I don't know. I don't think that's a good idea. What I, on all the, while I'm at it, I'll show you. I did use the tap. I stuck that in there and I used that in the drill chuck to find my zero zero spot and that worked out fine for setting the, the hold parameters. Here's the issue I had with the left hand side the micrometer as I showed you yesterday the last uh, segment you know I got the holes drilled perfectly they line up great and I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the light here or not but I can see it. Now yeah, my hands are blocking the light, but the holes are going to be fine. It's going to be perfect. However, as you can see, the N on corn has a little bit of interference with this side of the of the hat, so to speak. So what I'm I thought about this overnight, and I, I know the book what their remedy was. To clear off a spot, you know, I guess you'd use a fly cutter or something an inch and a quarter in diameter um, all the way around, and that would have taken a chunk out of the end there, which is kind of a shame because it's kind of cool that they have the, the name of the tool cast in there. As you can see, when I milled these surfaces flat, I just milled up close to the end without getting into it. So what I'm looking at here is, it's a, I'll, hold, I'll tip this up in a second, you can see... It's a really small amount of metal, and I could, you know, the options I've thought about were taking a Dremel die grinder type thing and, you know, grinding away part of the end. But again, that's a shame to do that. Um, or I could mill away part of the little hat. As you, there you can see the clearance issue that it causes. And what I decided to do, I'm about ready to do it, um, mark this out with a sharpie marker a little better and i'm just gonna i'm gonna grind a relief on the bottom of the of the hat first if i can just do that basically kind of a fillet type grind i'm sorry i was trying to unloosen the sharpie marker cap but i'll i'm gonna try to f do a fillet grind first if that works great if not then i'll just grind a little flat there where the end is so there'll be a little flat edge on the uh on the body as it's called i'll bring you back when i've got that done and we'll kind of wrap up the the body okay that was pretty simple and as you can see i have solved a little problem too bad they didn't put the lettering a little further over to the left because there's nothing that goes over here but anyway all i did was simply grind with the bench grinder wheel a little relief here and I'll show you that in just a second. Let me, maybe I can switch this around and there'll be a little more light on it. Yeah, that'll work out good. So bear with me while I unscrew these Phillips head screws with this one hand. It's one thing I was, as I got to putting these in, I was like, I'm gonna check the book because they, um, they don't call for, they don't specify that the heads should be countersunk. And in fact, now that I think about it, I, I remember seeing like Duncan, Duncan Metal Amps, his um, his assembly had the not round head screws like this, but it had socket head set screws which stick out a lot longer. I want to show one more thing before I take it all the way apart. But this is how it'll look, and there you can see the scribe line. This is something else I've gotten to think about. You know, I made a comment when I did the segment on 
turning this little barrel of the body here and let's see if I can unscrew this left handed anyway and making that I just use the diamond tool holder to scratch that line in there and it really would be better to have a finer line and they um, the George Thomas book on making the um, small non-geared rotary table has instructions in it about making a scriber and I did use that scriber for all of the 360 degree marks on my little non-geared rotary table so that's a, a topic for the future let's see if take this thing out now I'll show you the little notch that I ground and so I continue to try to unscrew this left handed and film with the other hand oh, a couple more turns isn't that aggravating you think you have it all the way out and I heard it click. Right, there we are. So here's the little hat thing, the body it's called according to the design. And you can see where I had marked with the Sharpie where it needed to be relieved. And I just did that with a bench grinder literally about five minutes ago. Well, just as soon as I finished talking and showing that. So it, that's the relief, it's fine. It fits on there good, everything bolts down. I really am pleased that I use the pitch circle diameter uh, function of the mill to make those holes because there was no filing to make them all fit. I think I had the offset wrong when I tried to do the Dremel trick in the lathe. It's been a long time since I did that. So I think, I, I think it was my fault. I think I had the math wrong. So anyway, that's a wrap for the body of the micrometer and real pleased with how it's come out so far. I think what I'm going to do is, I think I'll probably already have about 20 minutes worth of video for this part of the project. So I think I'll put these all together and just do, you know, part one micrometer body. The next part will be the thimble that goes over there. And that, that's the one that's a little complicated because it has the engraved lines in it and it has the internal groove um, board for the ball bearings. And I do have, oh, sorry. I do have some 3 16 inch ball bearings. As a matter of fact, these are stainless steel. I must have gotten these for one of the pump projects on the locomotive. So, because you can see it's a McMaster car bag. So, I'm glad I'll be able to use those for something else. Alright, so, so the next thing is the thimble. And I'll get that set up. That's what I'm going to do tonight. And uh, set up to, to machine the thimble. I needed to give it some thought about how I approach that. So, that will be the next thing I tackle, and maybe I can do the thimble and the screw together in the same, but I'm trying to keep these to about 20 minutes so they're not too overly long and boring. Um, please comment, let me know. I mean, I'm trying to include a little bit more of the machining operations and a little bit less show and tell. I'm trying to make it a useful combination. Again, my whole idea is to, you know, like as, as though we're machining buddies and you're building one and I'm building one and I'm showing you what I'm doing, uh, what setups I'm, I'm using and so forth and things I'm thinking about. So again, I hope that's interesting to everybody and useful. I, I'm sure um, if I was building one from scratch like I am, it would be nice to have a resource like this to look at uh, because the, the ones on the web are only so good. They're fantastic and I appreciate everything everybody else has done. Uh, prior, but I'm trying to add to the body of knowledge. So let me know what you think and please share the word and with your, your friends and let's grow the channel, get some more subscribers. And as always, I appreciate you. Hope you had a great weekend and I will keep you posted.